so like the part I could say for sure that there's no script. There's no paper script on uh, Terrace House. Never had a girlfriend. Never kissed a girl either. And, and has that Never. Ch- changed since the show? Ooh. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. The more people who wants me to die, I want to live more. Mm-hmm. And the more more people who cause me fat, then I want to, you know, lose more weight. Off, 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 off. The pill. All right. Clap, claps. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Off the Bill Podcast. Okay, that's good. Today, we got David in the moderator seat, Paco right here next to me. I'm Ryan, and we have a very special guest, Mr. Eden Kai in the house. Hey, what's you up? You might recognize him from uh, A Tedis House, <laughs> the Hawaii edition. What was the name of that one? Aloha State. Aloha State. Aloha State. I should know that. We should know that. Why should <laughs> I? We didn't even that? watch it, huh? No, but I did a little bit of research, so I knew that at least. Anyway, yeah. we met uh, a few months ago, and mm-hmm. I said I was a big fan. <laughs> And I was, I Which wasn't is lying. a mind blowing for me because I was a huge fan of you. Yeah, that's uh, for like the was, 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 was. I, I, I am, I am. <laughs> I'm just, we're just messing with you. <laughs> um, so just uh, for people who don't know, Terrace House is mm-hmm. a, it's a Japanese reality show. Uh, it's on, on Netflix. Netflix, on Netflix, and Fuji TV in Japan. Three guys and three girls um, living together, and romance or uh, their life mm-hmm. uh, focus on their lifestyle. Just think of like a wholesome Jersey Shore or real world kind of thing. How do you, I, I don't know how to explain it because I never liked those shows, like reality mm-hmm. shows. But that Terrace House was the first one I could actually watch. Really? Oh, and I think it's because it doesn't like there's. There's minor things. I don't know how, what's so appealing because it's about realistic, it. It's addicting. believable. It is. That could be it. It like, pulls you into like the normalities of. It's life. not dramatic, like yeah. people fighting every every episode. And well, I don't know. Maybe well, I mean, maybe there's some truth behind that. There's I don't some know. fights or something but going like on. Small. Maybe, but yeah, I think that's interesting to hear because I I hear a lot of people uh, uh-huh. f- from foreigners a lot that uh, they want to learn Japanese or like they're learning the Japanese culture. And they, that's like the most of people who watch is like the show. Right. Well, I mean, watching it just like the, there's things I didn't even, I'm Japanese. I didn't even know. Cause that's not my culture. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm Americanized, sure. but just like watching that show and seeing like the little things that get on people's nerves, I guess, mm-hmm. or like the way that it's just such a different, maybe that's what's appealing to me is Japanese culture and how everyone's so polite. And the moment there's like, you, you stray away from that a little bit. It's uh, offensive. Yeah, I, th- I mean, depends what you do and stuff, but yeah. I think, yeah, I never thought about that. Well, let's talk a little bit about mm-hmm. uh, who you are because, you know, for some people who haven't even seen the show, mm-hmm. they they don't even know who you are in the first place. Uh, you know, where are you from? You know, you're, uh, you're a lot younger than we are. 21? Yeah. Born in 1998. September 24. blowing, right? Yeah. And you were on the show at the age of what? 18. 18. I was a senior in high school. And where where were you uh, born and raised? I was born and raised in Tokyo, Japan, a place called Hachioji. And I never went to international school, uh, just a regular public school until seventh grade. And after that, my entire family moved to Hawaii about six and a half years ago. So I went to a local high school, graduated. So you can speak this well in six and a half years? Well, still learning. Uh, my dad is this from is actually. My dad is Japanese American, so he's uh he was born and raised in Portland, Oregon. Okay. So I understood what he was talking about, but I so my mom's from a normal way too, but I spoke like Japanese to both of them. It's still like pretty impressive that you're able to pick it up because I originally just hearing you talk, I thought you were uh, American raised. That's a compliment. In Thanks. Hawaii, and then <laughs> there's also, like no accent whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, uh, yeah, you have the laid back mm. kind of personality of a Hawaii person as well. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I mean, I'm from Hawaii. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean, though, because he's kind of just like, uh, yeah, like, yeah, like show, a Hawaiian Japanese, like a Hawaiian. No, but Japanese his English person. is even better than people from Hawaii. Oh yeah, that that <laughs> too. Yeah, your enunciation <laughs> is <laughs> yeah. is great. Like in a, yeah. like a Thanks. American Thank born, you. people you. probably think you speak better English than the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. Oh. I don't know. Maybe you just learned the right way. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that means you're really smart. That means yeah. you did well in school, probably. Yeah. Well, um, I always follow my passions. You're for a musician. Sure. We can talk about that. So you actually, even on the show, um, you were, well, you do a lot of things, but you were primarily what, ukulele player? I play the ukulele acoustic guitar, and I'm a singer-songwriter currently. 
And now you're doing shows and stuff. Yes, going back and forth. Would you say most of your fans are are like know you from Terrace House? Uh, yes, I think so. But is, um, oh, I'm sorry. Is, no, what is your fan base like? Because mm-hmm. you know, ever since Netflix has acquired the rights to Terrace House, I'm sure that has gotten you like international fans. Yes, it, it, it was pretty mind blowing for me too because I did not know first that it's going to be on Netflix. I thought it was like only for mm. Japanese TV, but when I first noticed that, oh, you see like an English comment, my post, and after that, like a lot of stuff happened, and it's I, I was happy, you know, and blessed, and never get to never thought of like experiencing stuff like this, mm-hmm. and uh, I'd say a lot of people are from Japan. Are in Japan. Your fan base. Fan base, yes. But uh, at the same time, some people are uh, from U.S., uh, Canada, Europe, uh, Philippines, Thailand, Brazil. Mm-hmm. I'm just blessed. You're a worldwide sensation and multi-talented. I was, <laughs> I was kind of shocked how many people, like not just in Japan and not mm-hmm. like how many people watch Terrace House. Like it's a Japanese reality show. It doesn't make sense that all mm-hmm. of us would love it so much, but it's mm-hmm. it's huge. Like. I, I mean, it, if you know, you know. A lot of people don't watch it, but the people that do, it's like they're super into it. I I agree, actually. You know, um, a lot of Asian people, like it doesn't matter if it, if the person is Japanese or Chinese or Korean, like a lot of Asian people basically watches the show, which is pretty mind-blowing to me, mm-hmm. too. Or if anyone's dating an Asian, they watch it. <laughs> wow. No, no, a lot of times, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, me, me, yeah, me and my boyfriend like watches the show, like so, like me and my wife, or uh-huh. yeah, my husband. And See, but I'm wondering, like, is there just? I mean, I'm sure there are. I'm, I'm about to sound really racist, but is is there like? Mm. I wonder if there's people who are just like what in a white group that watches Terrace House. I find I feel like is that rare, it, like in the Midwest. Yeah, um, that's what yeah. I mean. Like, because it's on Netflix, so anyone can watch it, right? Like, it's not rare, I think, but like most of them are like Asian people, but. Like I do receive some comments mm-hmm. too, like you know that's non-Asian. So what's and, the appeal to them? Do they just like? Because I know there's some people who just like Japanese culture. Exactly, like whoever likes Japanese culture, or you know who's interested, yeah, uh, to see what is it like mm-hmm. in Japan, or like to live with Japanese people. Right. I will like, say um, this is to the audience, anyone listening right now or watching. Uh, it sounds. I'm just gonna be completely honest. It sounds like the most boring show in the world. Mm. Um, but then that's what I thought initially watching one episode of it. And I was like, Oh, that, that was all right. I guess I'll watch another one. Well, I, and actually, I got addicted. I actually felt the same when I just f- heard about the name. <laughs> You're on the show. I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> before Aloha state, I only knew about the name. I never right. watched it. And uh, I, I could totally relate to you. Cause like, that's what I thought. Yeah. The you description, know? right? Three guys, three girls living in a house. Yeah. yeah. And, and nothing really like, it's hard to say nothing happens because mm-hmm. when you compare it to American reality shows, right? Like Jersey shore, and um, yeah, it's more I aggressive, know, real world yeah. stuff. Yeah, like it's that. so dramatic. Yeah. People are mm. fighting, punching each other, and stuff. And then, and, and then you watch this show, and everybody's so polite and nice to each other that mm. the camera's just set on a tripod. It's like beautifully shot. It's not like extreme zoom ins and shaky camera <laughs> to make everything look more hectic. You know, it's yeah. very calm and relaxing, and it's, it's like watching it's people eating dinner. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, it, but it's really, a, isn't it more so about like mm-hmm. your the the viewer is thinking about like what they're thinking, like what are they thinking when they're silently eating together? What's going through their mind, right? right. All of the little nuances of like human interaction. I think that's what's really right. funny and interesting. And also the having the commentators, right? The uh, What do you guys call them? Um, I say, we say like studio members or studio uh-huh. member and stuff. I love them. Yeah, they're super entertaining. Super and I think that's what makes the show. Yeah. No offense. But I mean, like, it, no, I mean, sure. it, no yeah. they, they're the consistent people that there's basically for those that don't know, mm-hmm. you guys have a reality show, but in between the show, there's commentators commenting on every little thing, exactly. people exactly. they like, people they don't like. And they're people. celebrities, right? I yes, they so. are. Um, yeah. Like, remember the guy with the glasses, Yamachan? Yeah. He's, he's a funny. professional comedian. And I was so happy when I was, you know, roasted by him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what did he, what Shout did out he, to Yamachan. <laughs> what did he say about you? Well, I mean, he told me that, oh, you used to bet, like, you know, drink all the uh, bathtub water, like, girls like bathtub oh. like, water and stuff. <laughs> wow. He's basically like Japanese Paco. That's what we do. <laughs> He's just like the and, dirty one. And, <laughs> dirty! And I could be like, I, I, I did not, or did I? Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> That's so funny. Skip it, skip it. That's the word. 
So when the when the show is mm-hmm. coming out, um, it sometimes it's not finished while you guys are still recording, right? Like, no, do you see not. yourselves like as the show is so being filmed? That's the uh, cringy or awkward part of the show because we're gonna see ourselves when that's released right. inside the house, which we did. Uh-huh. So you know, you remember the scene that oh, like. Um, are you interested on you know like anyone or like spoiler alert? Who's by your the like way. favorite like from Aloha State? Mm-hmm. And you know um, blah 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 blah. And that scene is out, and right, we watched it, and it was pretty awkward. Well, I was wondering because there's, I mean, again, spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. There's there's moments where you got like in the earlier episodes, you guys all. I feel like in every season they always talk about, oh, who are you interested in? You know, and you're mm-hmm. just like a private conversation with the boys, private conversation with the girls. Mm-hmm. But it, you know you're being filmed, so like you know that other person's going to see it, right? Mm-hmm. Don't I mean? Doesn't that affect? I mean, I, I don't. I don't know. Maybe I feel like I would be affected by knowing that that person's going to see it. Well, I wasn't. Uh, for me personally, I, I did not know like that it'll be on that that early. Uh, first oh. of all, so I wasn't, so I, I don't know, like maybe others, like they knew about it. So like, were you being like completely <laughs> just like, oh, these are my honest feelings. Cause you were very honest. By the time that they see it, <laughs> it's, I'm out of here. Such there. an honest human being. <laughs> yeah. No, but, um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about that at all. Uh-huh. Uh, so you're just being authentically you. I, I think so. With like the, the part is that, you know, I could say for sure that I was nervous Mm. a lot for the first couple of weeks because you know like living with strangers and yeah. i was like the youngest you know uh the other cast eric and even they're like you know 27 26 mm-hmm. at that time and they're like 10 years older than me about so i was you know a little pressure like and i was kind of you know scared if they're gonna like me or not and stuff mm-hmm. but you know once i kind of got used to it and got close with them and stuff everything's fine right. so mm-hmm. yeah did you um I guess I don't know if you can talk about this or not, but like, did was there anything that you? I don't. I know you can't answer this. So I don't know why I'm asking, but <laughs> is there anyone that you you really didn't get along with there? Yeah, it's got to be annoying living with two other dudes in the same room. That's like it's not it's not just housemates. It's mm-hmm. roommates, right? Yeah. And then three girls like right down the hall. I don't know if it's down the hall, but like in the same <laughs> house. You know, it's a beautiful house, but there's got to be some things that get that got you a little annoyed. I don't know if you can just say what you can say. Um, I could say that um, right now I love them all. <laughs> but, um, Such a piece. You're diplomatic. Such right a but, um, I, I could say for sure that um, the whole purpose is you know we all have different personalities. Everyone yeah. is different, and for real estate, what's interesting is that there's uh, people that's Japanese, Japanese from Japan, but there's also local people. Mm. So there's going to be you know some culture differences, how they think different. Yeah, for uh, sure. So yeah, you know, like might be tough sometimes mm-hmm. that they kind of you know get along. I mean, yeah. you've seen like Eric the and Naomi that scene too. Yeah, so stuff like that. And could you explain uh, what happens between this? Because I haven't seen it. So well, just in, we were talking about this earlier. Just mm-hmm. like Japanese culture in general is so different for like what's acceptable uh-huh. and what mm-hmm. isn't. You don't sometimes you don't even know. I think in that scenario, without spoiling anything, you don't even know that you're being offensive to someone when in, you are in, in mm-hmm. a different culture because you wouldn't. It's not considered offensive in their yeah. culture, yeah. in your own culture, or like even you're originally from Japan, but if you you know used to the environment <laughs> that you're you know, been around, then you might say something offensive. Right. Because you just forget about it. Yeah. So, well, so you're indirectly saying that there are some people in there, in the house that may not have, uh, you may not have liked. What are you trying to fish out of him right now? Like, <laughs> I don't think he said anything. Like that. <laughs> we got the wrong guy on the show for to be talking about that stuff. Would you, would you be, would, so you're friends with everybody. Mm-hmm. And you're close to everybody. Well, um, I'd say no, because everyone lives in a different place. Mm-hmm. Um, some people live in Japan. Some people lives in Hawaii. Some people lives in LA or in mainly New York. Yep. So you know we're going our separate ways, but I'm totally cool with, like with everyone, and I think everyone's cool. Like you know they're and nice. you're on the most recent season as well. They brought you back. Yes, Tokyo 2019, 2020. So you're in right now. Only part one of the new season mm-hmm. is out. There's another part. Are you? Can you say if you're in that as well? We'll see. Okay. <laughs> please we'll please, uh, That's please all I get. Uh, go check it out. Uh, yeah. I, have and, a, uh, I have a question about, because, like, you know, not everybody has the opportunity to be mm-hmm. on a, 
a reality TV show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of people do wonder about the camera situation, like how many cameras were there? W- was mm-hmm. it just like a bunch of like uh, webcams that were set everywhere? Or I not webcams, webcams? But, sorry. Was, or just like, <laughs> you know, really camera. good quality. Though. Yeah. yeah. Or just like mm-hmm. DSLR cameras or whatever is. is I think he said up. he can't, s- you can't say, right? Behind the scenes stuff. Okay, well gotcha. then, w- it depends. I will say there's a reason why we're wondering because no one's allowed to say anything on that show. I feel like I tried to Google it before. <laughs> wow, it's just because it's shot so differently that it is. I think mm. that's another attraction where people are like, "How are they filming it?" With mm. and and getting these like raw, real emotions from people w- mm. that's not over the top. I- yeah, I mean, I have a friend who was actually a director for a reality TV show, mm-hmm. and he he told because I asked him some questions about how reality TV shot, and uh, some of the things that he mentioned were, were was that like he will like everything's real, but there would be certain <coughs> scenarios that he would kind of create, like he provoke, would say, right. yeah, provoke and say, hey, this person kind of said this thing about you, um, and you know, like I I like I don't know how oh, you feel about normal that. Normal in reality yeah. shows, though, right? Uh, no, we did, we, we did not have that. Actually. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So like the part I could say for sure that there's no script, there's no paper script on uh, Terrace House. Mm. So, but I mean, you know, like how you guys, mm-hmm. like there's a camera rolling, someone walks into a room and then all of a sudden every, like the cameras are the camera rolling all that time. That's a lot of wasted footage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like someone has to turn that camera on. I mean, I know you can't answer that, but I'm just saying, like, that's what I wondered about. Because it's like, this, how? I'll, I'll be the same. I'll be the same. Yeah. If I was you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, w- he walked into the room. There's no way, like, the cameraman is on a tripod. There's no <laughs> way the cameraman's just there. Or he's just waiting for him, right? Just yeah. Like, I hope he comes. That's what I was like. Room. And if they're not filming the whole time, because that's high quality footage, there's mm-hmm. no way they have that much space <laughs> like, <laughs> to hold all that footage. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get away from the behind the scenes stuff because I know you can't talk about it anyway. Um, but I mean, in general, mm-hmm. I will say, I mean, you, you kind of, in a way blow, blew up from the show, right? I think everybody like at different levels, right? Like Lauren really blew up mm-hmm. from the show. Yeah. Like she's like on a TV show now, right? I know it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then you're doing shows all over the place, which you weren't necessarily doing before, like touring and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. Well, you're skilled. I mean, there's a reason why people were impressed by you and it's also very like um, on the show they were talking about it, like <clears throat> how you're you have such a like a what's that demeanor called? <laughs> like very um, introverted, I guess. I don't know if you're an introvert. I'm just assuming. Anyway, you seem very like yes. quiet. But then when you play the ukulele, <laughs> when you play instruments, you're like crazy. Well, I mean, I'm happy to hear that. I, I you know, um, oh, another thing. Um, I never really wore pajamas before, but. <laughs> Uh, for share house and stuff, I wanted to be polite. Mm-hmm. So that's why I decided to bring my pajamas, but never thought of like receiving lots of like positive feedbacks. Same for like that my was pers- like the first episode, right? Yeah. And same for my personalities. You know, I wasn't expecting to receive like you know, feedbacks mm-hmm. like that. You know, oh, he he's acting completely different when he plays a guitar ukulele. Right. I was like, really? Like, I never thought of that. Yeah. So it's, it's, I think the part that's interesting for uh, me or like other cast members is that you're able to look at yourself on the screen mm. uh, from like the third point of view. Right. Cause you're not used to just seeing your everyday life being yes. shown and to everyone. Mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah. I, I learned <laughs> a lot from it, you know, mm-hmm. were there some things in, uh, in the show that you wish they didn't cut out or they, that, or that they, or you wish that you, that they did, that did, or they did. Yeah. There's probably a lot oh. that you wish they did, but <laughs> right. And I'm sure they picked the best moments. Yeah. Right? Like they can't show everything. Yeah. It's not, it's only for like, sure, for sure. What in 45 minutes, an episode, something like that. Uh, well, if they cut it out, you probably can't say, right? Well, I mean, well, you wouldn't know, right? I want it to be cut or like, I want it. Things you wish, wish. couldn't oh. have made it. Well, back then, definitely the scene when I eat catfish alone. After that was such a good was, scene, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know well, it sucks I, for you. Well, good well, TV. Back then, back then. But yeah. Nowadays, it's, it's it's super hilarious. Like it's it's funny. Um, I love. <laughs> it's peop- not funny, man. It's sad. <laughs> well, I mean, can you describe the scene for those who haven't seen it? Well, um, I went out, or you know, hung out with uh, the cast, one of the cast members, and uh, went to go watch uh, some <laughs> some fantastic piece. 
uh, you know the movie. Harry and Potter after, one, yeah. Yes, um, that's it. It was, it was it was a great movie. Anyways, uh, after <laughs> so you went to <laughs> I watch was gonna a, movie. a comment about yeah. the movie, but you uh, watched a movie with someone mm, from the show, yeah, from the show. Yes. Yep. And after the movie, you know, it was supposed to be a surprise, and I reservate, um, made, you a know, reservation. made a reservation, like at the um, a place, a, a restaurant, a restaurant. Yep. And I asked her if you want to go eat dinner, and I politely got declined. Well, what was her excuse? She had grandparents' dinner or yeah. something like that. I really hope she doesn't watch this. <laughs> but Why? That, it's all out there already. But it, that's no, no, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> In fact, we're going to clip it and send and tweet it to her. <laughs> anyway. That's, that's even better. That's even better. Wait, yeah. so, wait, so she said that she had to go to dinner with her grandparents, which is a lot. It like, was something like that. Which is reasonable. Sure. It was just, I mean, but then you got to see the behind the scenes, which is what, what I was talking about earlier of what, like, she was saying, well, I think she really did have to do that. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, well, I mean, you know, I, I think family is important. What I could say, <laughs> uh, family is important. You know, like yeah. you, you don't know what's going to happen like any time. So, um, I you're think such a nice guy, man. I think you're, it's a, you're too nice. So <laughs> you're too nice. So she, she had to go have dinner yeah. with mm -hmm. her grandparents and yeah. then, and then you went to dinner. went to dinner that you made a reservation for two with. Yes. You went alone, and then you ordered a catfish. Yes, <laughs> uh, that was my first catfish, and you know I did, I did not want when I you know cancel the whole reservation and. Uh, Why not? I mean, well, I would just cancel. Yeah, that. I would have canceled. Yeah, I would, <laughs> really? I, that's yeah. why I said I feel like most people would have done that, but that's why his he was so interesting on the show. <laughs> You know, because well, you actually went. Well, it was like you know, pretty close from the movie theater. Yeah. So yeah, why not? You know, just try <laughs> some new stuff. And then basically, the what was sad about it is he ha there's a shot and he's just eating alone after being rejected, essentially. And but it was just very. It was like a very like heartbreaking but, moment because everybody's mm -hmm. rooting for him. You know. But let me ask you this: Did you enjoy the catfish? <laughs> um, I tasted a bunch of emotions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. But actually, fun story um, on this trip in LA, mm -hmm. um, I haven't eaten catfish for like three years after that. And recently, a few days ago, I actually ate catfish. Wow, that's symbolic. And, and then what happened? It tasted a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And now he's back, ladies. He's back on the market, I'm the back, fish yo. market, Skeegee. <laughs> hey, Skeegee's gone now, right? I wouldn't know. Uh, I think they moved it or something, right? Mm, or it's something gone. Or like that. I, heard yeah. I haven't heard anything story. from it. But uh, um, I think one thing that I read online, um, that they're talking about like you're a virgin or something when you went on the show? Yes. What? I mean, the whole, I think that what you said initially coming on was something or, like- Or I mean, it's, I never got in a relationship. Yeah. Yes. So like complete then just like- Yeah. Never had a girlfriend. Never kissed a girl and, either. And has that never. Ch changed since the show? Ooh. <laughs> you know it. Netflix popularity, baby. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I mean, I'm sure no, we're we'll to talk about yeah. it. I mean, mm. <laughs> yeah. But you've already said everything without saying anything. Um, <laughs> or, uh, but I'm, I'm definitely still bad on it, you know. Uh, so I want to ask you, Ryan, 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 any tips for for me, like for dating <laughs> advice? You're or, asking me? Yeah, like, <laughs> um, it's a great opportunity. Like, I mean, I don't know if I'm the best person. Like, I'm not known for picking up girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I would like, say found the right one. I would say so. naturally. Your mm -hmm. your genuine kindness seems to be a gift, and I think if you're just more confident with that, mm -hmm. you seem a lot more confident already from the show. At least just talking to, I mean, you're talking to us like it's nothing, and like on the show, <laughs> it seemed like you were struggling to just talk to people initially, but it seemed to mm -hmm. improve over time. Yeah, and I haven't did. seen the mm -hmm. the new season with you in it. Um, I st I was gonna wait until the next part comes out and watch it all at once mm -hmm. so I can binge it. Awesome. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, just talking to you now, I was kind of shocked before, like, uh, because I hadn't met you except for that one time and we barely got to talk and mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I mean, that's another thing about those reality shows. Like, you, you get an idea of a person, mm. but they're not always exactly like that. Or maybe you've I, changed a lot. I don't know. Well, I could totally say, you know, I've been <clears throat> through a lot over three years, but, you know, things about a show, reality show, is that uh, what they show, it's, it is a part of me. Mm -hmm. But it's not everything of me, you know, and there's always going to be like some fun parts with me. 
and hopefully I could, you know, show more of that in my uh, life, in, my in journey. Your, is, yeah. is there anyone that you feel like, not necessarily acts, but like they know they're on camera, so they're acting differently from when the cameras are off? You can't talk about that <laughs> either, huh? <laughs> but, yeah. Um, what, do we have to go to shishi break? No, sp- yes, we do, but, sp- mm-hmm. but I think before we go to the shishi break, you did bring your guitar here. Yeah. Guitar, um, just in oh. case you brought a guitar. guitar. I think um, we should have that as our shishi break. We've never had a live performance here. Really? We've never. Oh, no, we've never. I think you may be the first here. Yeah. Let's see how we can even record this properly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. We would love should, to hear some music from you. That'd be sure. amazing before our shishi right. break. Well, <laughs> let us. Uh, yeah. Take us away into our shishi break. It'll be just here. Is break. eating guy. Uh, this is a. Uh, you know, a clip of uh, my new song that I work with uh, Kat McDowell and uh, Kazumi Shimokawa. You know, they're awesome. And uh, it's uh, the song title is called Outside Inside. And, uh, you know, the time I get treated as Japanese Japanese in Hawaii and uh, a foreigner as a foreigner in Japan. I had that in a lot. And I used to think about it a lot. But like the most importantly, just be you kind of song. So like the chorus goes like. From the outside inside out. Outside looking in, outside looking in. And the intro goes like. Something like that. Wow. Woo! Thanks. You have very fast Thank hands. You. <laughs> Thank you. I was awesome. really nervous. <laughs> no, that was great. Thank you. And we're back. Welcome back. Thanks for that, s- that song. That yes, was awesome. Thank you. Oh, no, thanks. Thank felt you. Very quick, actually. It's yeah. such an honor. When thank did you. you learn to play? When? Yeah. Uh, for guitar, I was, I think I was 14. And I started playing the ukulele from high school. Oh, oh that's kind of recent. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's not that, that's not oh. an easy thing to do. Were you a fan of Jake Shimabakuro? Uh, I, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> actually, no. You did not know about him oh really uh, and, oh. but like after all like i've searched it up mm-hmm. after i started playing the ukulele and stuff and oh like you know such a cool play style and stuff uh-huh. and uh, i got to meet him one time and yeah he was super kind yeah, yeah he's awesome yeah i i'd never met him but I, everybody in hawaii knew about him just because he was the guy who could play the ukulele a little too fast <laughs> That guy was crazy, man. He's, ama- he's one know. of the It was best. almost like, oh, slow down, dude. Like, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> His arms are like, ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um. So what else is going on? I mean, you're, you're here in LA mm-hmm. right now doing what? Shows here or? Uh, mainly creating the uh, EP mm-hmm. right now. And uh, So this is your third EP or? It's actually my first EP. First? Okay. Mm-hmm. And then what are these two things? So those two are albums, uh, my instrumental albums. Uh, I made it a while ago, actually, from high school. Mm-hmm. And I had a couple uh, albums from Japan, but, you know, it's under the label. Yeah. And uh, yeah, things kind of changed. Uh, well, yeah. you look very different. I mean, you obviously you're a lot younger, but you look very different. Um, you said you were... Thank you. You were... I mean, mm-hmm. you lost a lot of weight. I did. I lost about 35 pounds after uh, appearing wow. on the Tokyo series. Thank you. Well, I mean, that's a that's a lot. <laughs> like, what what sparked it? Like, why all of a sudden? Well, you know, I wanted to you know be a best version of myself, and I think you know once I get the attention from the viewers as how the show goes, you know, um, I love the fans and stuff too. But you know, I also try to like listen to some people. Who gives out like suggestions? You're saying or negative comments? We're yes, telling you yes, to lose comments. Me. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to be like little. little really, I feel like good. we're in a time right now where people want the opposite. They're all about body positivity and mm, acceptance. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I I'm assuming with mm. all that positivity, there's always going to be comments that are the opposite, right? Naturally trolling and yes, and that really affected you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing about this show is that. You know, um, people are going to criticize you. You know, mm-hmm. people, everyone's different. You know, everyone has a different opinion. So if I do this on the screen, people think that oh, you should have like done that. Right. Mm. So that, you know, there's like everything going on. Everyone has an opinion about you. 
Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And but mm-hmm. I, I can't see a lot of negative opinions about you, though. I can. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Can I? Like what? Like what? Well, I mean, j- this is one thing where it's just like uh, you're too conservative. You know, mm-hmm. you're too kind where mm-hmm. you put other people before yourself, which is sometimes like, are you really living your best life at that point? Are you yeah. ma- are you really making the right decisions for yourself or are mm-hmm. you living for the gratification of others? Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of times when you hold yourself back like that, people can be frustrated because people, uh, you know, they want which is weird because they're living through you in a way where they're mm-hmm. like, oh, you should have been yourself. This is where you should have broke free. That's or what they would have done. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. So that's why, like, those are the type of criticisms and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, like when, I guess the awkward situations and mm-hmm. like being rejected is like, oh, you got rejected because of this. I would have did that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, it's like those types of things, mm-hmm. but, but it's not su- saying, I'm, it's not saying he's a bad person. No, right? I know. I'm just right. saying, I'm kind of surprised that that was the thing they attacked you. Like, I'm sure that there was other reasons they attacked you, but I mean, to say like, Hey, lose weight or like you're too fat or whatever you weren't, mm-hmm. I mean, like on the show, you weren't that like, you weren't big. I don't think you were. I you mean, weren't you weren't overweight. Yeah, not at. I don't I, think yeah. so. No, Especially but you have to understand. If, if you compare to Americans, maybe, maybe <laughs> Japanese. Maybe in no, Japan. But that's why in yeah. Japan it might be overweight. Is that where the comments came? Like the those comments came from? Mostly Japanese fans, or is it from Americans as well? Well, mostly from Japanese people. And I mean, really? you know, like don't get me wrong. Like and everyone has, you know, people. Yeah, uh, Chris of course. Yeah. And stuff, but um, not a spoiler. But uh, before part two is out, um, I received like tons of more uh comments like that than when i was appearing on aloha state oh you the current season the current season you yes. received a lot of hate i did mostly I did. regarding your weight or something else everything everything like basically. what like just um you know just just straight up die and stuff um <laughs> oh those are, right. yeah yeah that's but pretty harsh y- you know like i mean after all all the stuff that you know, has happened um, for the past three years and especially like this year, I think I have like thicker skin. Uh, yeah. I have a stronger mental and well, not always, but I'm trying to like think it, mm-hmm. you know, positively, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. the more people who wants me to die, I want to live more. Mm-hmm. And the more, more people who cause me fat, then I want to, you know, lose more weight as much as possible. I mean, not at the point that I'm going to like, not unhealthy. you know, have like a food Please. disorder or something, yeah. but uh, right. you know, just trying to be healthy, trying to be myself. And I mean, I don't feel anything about it, but like, you know, for that time, it was pretty tough for me that I couldn't share my emotions to my fans or the crowd. You know, I just got to yeah. act like nothing is going on, but you know, that happens for everyone else. I think it does. Sure. But I mean, I think you have to a certain degree, you have an image of like real, real innocence. And I think, I mean, you were even just saying it now, like you feel like you can't really express yourself completely. Um, I feel like, I feel like you can. Like mm. I think, I think. I mean, I, I do like like in front of like my friends or mm-hmm. like you know, but not public, like face to face. Is that? Do you think is that a, ja- mm. a Japanese culture thing? Culture. It's it's a long it's a long story. Like what? what but uh, what would happen if you were to? Because you know, in America, right? Like, mm. uh, if you look on uh, on YouTube and a lot of these YouTubers expressing themselves, expressing their I love the, it, like yeah. their depression and the things, their struggles, and the, that they're going through. If you were to do that to a Japanese audience, how how will they generally react to something like that? Don't wouldn't that make them it's like feel taboo? Right? Is it taboo, or do they feel more like they could relate to you and like, oh, I go through that too, and I want to support you? Through it this. really depends. If it's like a fan fan then you know going to be like are you okay or you know like i want to relate to you but like if it's like just other everyone else mm-hmm. then it'll be like uh like don't give me that negative vibe i don't want to i don't want to see that kind of stuff right you know? so it's it's not a taboo but like it's it depends it depends on yeah. the situations and stuff that's but what i know japan as like mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. traditionally like you don't mm-hmm. like even just like naturally me growing up like we don't share you don't share your feelings really mm. you know with when you're growing at least for me yep. it's not like we didn't have a loving home or environment but if mm-hmm. you're like i don't know you just, i don't i never told my dad hey i love you like you know like it's not like in tv shows yeah. like, you don't really say that mm-hmm. at least in my household and all my friends growing up around that time maybe it's different now i think it's an asian thing it, I, it I is know. an asian thing yeah i think so maybe maybe not but i don't like, know for, but for, you're younger too but for me um well, the reason I started music is, you know, to make people smile. I, I know it kind of sounds cheesy, but I, I want to, you know, bring that positive vibes. Mm-hmm. And what I loved about you, YouTube, um, watching your videos too, is it makes me smile. Like, you know, it makes me um, positive overall. 
and that's what I want to do. And I'm happy that it's my job. And, you know, it's for like those personal stuff and stuff. I think it's really no need to share that with people, Mm -hmm. but I only want to share something that's happy with people. Right. So you like to bottle up that Mm -hmm. stuff in a way, which people say not to do, but I mean, I think everybody does it to a certain degree. And I also think right now it's almost people at least in the U S have mm-hmm. been going the opposite direction and creating more drama because that's what yeah. has become like the thing, right. To mm-hmm. share your depression and mental share your, health. Yeah. Which is, I mean, I, like I said, I think the stigma should go away and I'm, I'm glad that people are sharing that stuff, mm-hmm. but I think there's also people who are, how do you say like it's being over? They're taking advantage of the situation. Yeah. Because it's almost like becoming a, like, I don't want to say a trend cause it sounds disrespectful. But it's kind of becoming that, and I feel like if you can't get away with that, um, it's very. It, it, it just it just sees. I see the difference in the cultures. It, essentially, if you were to do that, I could see why your Japanese fans would be like, mm-hmm. "Oh, what are you whining about? Like, keep it to yourself," kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true. I'm just like yeah. off the top of my yeah. head. Maybe I mean sooner or later, I might just be like, yeah. "Oh, whatever." Just start sharing my emotions and stuff. But I mean, for most of the times, I'm I'm pretty happy or mm-hmm. try to be positive kind of guy. So right. You take yeah. the negative and you uh, use it to yeah, drive like, you. Now I feel better if mm-hmm. I receive those comments because I get more, you know, motivation. You know, mm-hmm. talking I'm glad about I agree. talking about the catfish. You know, like reject me more, reject me more. Like I want more rejection. You know, I want more haters. Mm-hmm. So, well, so we, that I could go like, you know, I could motivate myself and be a better person. Mm-hmm. Well, we all hate you here, so. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best compliment ever. Thank That's you. That's exactly why we brought you on. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, just, just <laughs> so, we actually have this list, 10 things we hate about Eden, and... Oh, no. wow. <laughs> I know, it's surprising. Only 10? There's way more. No, no, no. Should no, be no. 100, over 100. Should we get into some of this? Like, uh, the Twitter questions? I mean, there's stuff I know we can't, you can't talk about, um, but it's kind of interesting. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. All right, so one of the questions, which I like to, because uh, I'm curious, you kind of dodged it a little bit, but what does <laughs> your love life look like now? Mm. Are you single? Ready to mingle? Are you in a relationship? Are you talking? <laughs> Are you in some dodging way? this question? Well, uh, go watch part two when it's out. Oh. oh. Wow, you just told us you were in it then. Wow. No, well, he didn't say he's in it. He just said, go watch said, it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I mean... Yeah. Well, let's, let me ask you this. Have you ever written mm-hmm. a song about uh, someone that you loved or you had interest in uh, or a song for a girl at any point in your life? Yes. Are all of your songs about girls in your life? Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find nah, my way nah. through there, you know? <laughs> What what okay, what gives you the most inspiration mm-hmm. though? Is it like when you get heartbroken or do you draw inspiration from other things? So when I create a song, you know, it could be affection or non affection. I love to like create a little small short story inside my brain. How I want the song to start, but like how I want the song to end at the same time. And it could, you know, come from like a personal experience too, but like it also be like some kind of location or like view. There's a uh, really beautiful place called China Walls. And mm-hmm. uh, for my, a lot of my instrumental songs, I used to uh, go there after high school because I went to high school in Hawaii Kai, uh, my friends and, you know, just chilled there. And the sunsets are super beautiful. And that really inspired me a lot of creating um, one of my original songs. So it depends, but. Mm. Yeah. What what kind of girls do you like? Like if you uh, mm-hmm. if if you're not in a relationship, um, if you were to get into one, mm-hmm. uh, what kind of girls do you find yourself more attracted to? I I love. Well, doesn't matter. Like a friend or anything, you know, uh, a person who's really passionate about something. Mm-hmm. You know, it really doesn't matter what it is, but as long as like they're really passionate about it, you know, they're chasing that dream or. Uh, or just a little thing, you know? Um, personalities. Yeah. What about personal? personalities? You like, you like girls who are a little more quiet, a little more uh, able to have a conversation, outgoing, outgoing loud, uh, energy, low energy. Outgoing, for sure, I think. Because, you know, just love to communicate with people mm-hmm. nowadays. And 
nowadays. Now, nowadays, or for me, do you feel like that's a skill you. I mean, I know you mentioned it on the show, but is that a skill that you learned from being on the show? Because it seemed like over the course of those episodes that you were on, it improved for you. You seemed really shy, and then you s- slowly started opening up. It, I feel definitely better than before, mm-hmm. for sure. But not at the point that I'm satisfied. So mm-hmm. I'm still, there's more to go for me. Did you have a but lot I, of, sorry, you were saying? Uh, go ahead. No, <laughs> oh, um, I was just Real wondering, was like when yeah. you were a, in uh, junior high, high school, elementary, mm-hmm. uh, did you have a lot of friends or did you hang out with like a few people? Uh, just a few. Okay. And, and you're still friends? Sometimes. I, uh, Sometimes. So oh, not, I mean, on. that's that's a weird answer. <laughs> uh, we, this is what I want to say. Yeah, uh, yeah. We hang out sometimes. Yeah. Cause you're busy when I, whenever I'm in back, back in Japan. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's the thing about school is that everyone kind of goes like, you know, they're in like separate ways. You know, everyone lives in a different location and I'm more excited to meet new people for me mm-hmm. who has like a similar interest or uh, a similar passion. Well, so me. you're in, um, Sorry, you were in Japan how long again? Were For you were 14. Born till born 14? 14. So what do you like better? Like, mm-hmm. as like, w- where do you like living better? Uh, U.S. Why is that? I feel more being myself in the U.S. Meaning you can, you f- just feel more yourself because. I, I feel more open about anything mm-hmm. in the U.S. And you don't feel that in Japan? No. Is it, is it because of the culture? The society. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'd just say the society. Mm-hmm. The person, if, it, if the person is, oh, I'm really being honest. Okay. No, you're just talking <laughs> about culture. I don't, yeah. I mean, this doesn't yeah, sound I bad. I experienced that too. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not if, bad at all. You know, something like if the person is like older, you have to be super polite or, you know, right, if, right. If, if it's like your boss, you got to be super polite. Mm-hmm. Um, can't be late or, you know, if you, if it's just something slayed, you gotta like apologize and stuff like all, all these like you know taboo or like mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. manners and stuff and i'm not saying it's bad at all it's, it's really it's, it's great to be polite and stuff but sometimes you know when you when you kind of get used to the uh you know aloha vibe right the local vibe <clears throat> and whenever you're back in japan all of a sudden you know it, sometimes it, it kind of it's kind of too much yeah no i mean i, for, I 100% for me, agree yeah. because i mean i only went there for like I was there like a month ago mm-hmm. and I was only there for like a couple weeks and I've been there maybe three or four times, not very long. And every time I go, it's always like everyone is so polite and so nice to you that like you, f- I feel rude by just existing and not following, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm an American and like I, oh shoot, was I supposed to like just little things like I, I read on a, oh, I didn't read. I saw mm-hmm. a vi- video saying like how to take trains and stuff like that because I didn't know how to how to do any of that and then like mm-hmm. just just rules and like i didn't know but i was doing it i was like talking on the train mm-hmm. and i noticed oh wait no one talks on the train i don't i didn't know that was an etiquette thing i don't know if that's true or not but i mean yeah. no one talks to each other on the train and um i was just big old english american accent just ye- talking to people <laughs> you can say yeehaw right there. <laughs> no i mean it's just like little things like that i didn't even think about but like it's mm-hmm. everyone is so polite and i feel like it's not real i don't know if that's true or not but i feel like nobody can be so ha- like put on a smile and treat you so nicely all the time like there has to be some point of them that it's just like i don't like you they're really suppressing like, like their real emotions that's what i'm saying yeah and i feel like i don't i can't tell because everyone's so nice but when you're there long enough you're like this is kind of suspicious <laughs> how nice they are so that's why they're mostly honest on internet mm-hmm. mm. but i could i could say you know they're really committed which is not a bad thing at what all, but um, Japanese people mm-hmm. like they're really commit on like what they're doing. Yeah, but you know sometimes when it kind of goes too much, then you know they're um, they get super exhausted or they you know you know the situation like they work too much and yeah. they all of a sudden like black out and stuff and that's what's been going on a lot and um, yeah so. I think that's, you know, there's it's pro- all about the balance. Yeah, there's pros and cons to every mm-hmm. society. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, like Japanese people, uh, they uh, have like, like you said, one of the best work ethics, mm-hmm. but to the point where sometimes like th- there is exhaustion. Mm-hmm. And um, I think Japan has one of the highest suicide rates too. 
Mm -hmm. uh, which is an unfortunate fact, but it does come with the fact of um, being unable to express emotionally where you're at. Right. Because you're, you know, or and and the expectation. There's definitely a correlation. Yeah. And the expectation because um, you have to get into high school, you have to test, right? Yes. And even then, so there are certain high schools that are very good. And if you don't make into that, uh, it's looked down upon. It's not like ACT that you could just take it over and over yep. again. If you just miss, you got to wait for another year. And there's such a huge pressure. Um, it's heavily looked down on, right? Yeah, I, I don't know how much I could say about it, but like, you know, people... Nowadays, it's kind of different. But before, people used to like judge uh, from like what kind of school you went. Like, no matter like mm-hmm. friendship or uh, work. Right. You know, if you didn't get into a good school, the people who did looked yeah, down on the yeah. other people, right? So for me, like, I... I Never attended college, you know. Mm-hmm. I graduated high school, yeah, and got straight into uh, music. So, th- what do they see you as, scum? Uh, nowadays, no, but maybe before, like yeah. maybe you know, traditional people might think, oh, you never mm-hmm. attended college, like you know, he's that smart and stuff, right? Um, but I'm, I'm happy that there's you know a lot of people in Japan who accepts me, like mm-hmm. of uh, who I am, right? Well, you said a lot of your like half of your fans are from Japan. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a little bit of the uh, graces That's, of the media and being on Terrace House. Yeah. You get that exemption because it's like, oh, you didn't go to college, but it paid mm-hmm. off because you you were able to do these things. Well, yeah, that that was my, uh, the whole subject of like, you know, what I, what I was thinking the entire time of uh, Aloha State, whether or not if I want to attend the college or not. I was planning to go uh, attend a music college. Mm-hmm. And after, you know, like we've seen some life tips and advice. I talked about it to uh, everyone and decided not on the show you said mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, decided not to, but you know, like there's no regret of uh, whatever I have done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, mostly I really want to take, take, take care. And I want to really want to care about people who also cares about me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important thing. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. Sorry, I kind of got too deep. No, no, no. Yeah. no that's great. That's good. That's great. Um, so I, I noticed, uh, I, I watched some of your performances and mm-hmm. whatnot on, on, on YouTube. And oh, I thanks. And I noticed that uh, your dad is a very important part of your career. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I met you uh, before this podcast, um, mm-hmm. and, you know, with your, with your dad and we had a great conversation and it seems like he's very integrated into your, your life. Yes, he is. You know, uh, in fact, um, the music stuff actually came from, like, my parents, too. Like, my music interest. Mm. If that kind of makes sense. Are they musicians? or? My dad used to be a performer. Uh, he used to uh, work for NHK for 18 years. Uh, mm. He did uh, radio casting, right? Uh, yeah, like, voiceovers. And uh, he used to be an actor, too. Yeah, he's done, like, a lot of stuff. And, you know, my parents love music. Um, they, I think I remember like, uh, you put, you played like some like classical, classical music mm-hmm. when I was like little, but most likely, uh, I was heavily influenced by, uh, Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I was just blown away, um, of like how music could be powerful, like how much it could influence the entire crowd or like, you know, the whole entire like generation, yeah. like, you know, right. So since then, like I started actually singing first wow. before guitar and ukulele. But I was like starting for like four years when I was really into playing the guitar. So that's why during Terrace House, and so I wrote that song called Monogatari. Is I, that the, the one when yeah, you bef- left or in the before beginning? before I left? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So before that song, I haven't sang for like four years. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so wow. for my parents. So you're is your uh, full time musician slash actor? Would you say? Yes, um, acting used to be, or not used to be, but acting is my another passion. I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. I used to be a child actor when I was around six. You were a child actor when you were in Japan. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. what what were you in anything that's a little <laughs> like bit um, you can find? Um, like just several. Uh, commercials and uh, maybe TV dramas and stuff. Oh, nice! Yeah. Oh, like a I reoccurring actor. <laughs> yes, so you're a child like, star. That, so that's basically well, where you got your start, then, right? Well, you know, I, I was, I was like still that. little and stuff, but um, it, it was a while ago. Uh-huh. But 
after since Terrace House, I'm trying to like, you know, I found out that's, you know, it is my passion. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to like get back into it. Right. And it's, it's definitely fun, you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be a professional film movie kind of style, but it could be like, you know, really casual video and stuff. I just, um, I, I want to like entertain people and, you know, if they're, uh, make them happy mm-hmm. basically. So, yeah. How did you feel after being rejected by Haruka? Haruka? Mm-hmm. Is that how you say it? Uh, then watching the fireworks by yourself. That sounds like a typical <laughs> sad it, it sounds like the moment. Uh, catfish moment. A <laughs> no. bit. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know what you can say, but that part is clearly already out. Um, Japan, I, I, for sure. I read the question and it spoiled it because I asked you. I was like, who is Haruka? I, did, I didn't watch. And I was like, oh, this shoot. <laughs> but it, I already know now. So, I mean, right. like. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? You can talk about the stuff that's already been out, right? Sure. Um, <laughs> Just tell us a scenario. We want to know about you. You know, yeah, we heard about your uh, torment the again. situation, but what is this? <laughs> well, this is all, you know, has happened. Okay. Stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I went to the house and there's this girl like alone and she looked like have pretty heavy, heavily laid depressed. And I asked her what happened, and she liked one of the guy who also lives in a house. But one of her roommates told him okay. that she likes you without even asking her, her. For permission. Yeah, wow. exactly. That's messed up. And <laughs> he rejected her. Uh huh. Man. Wow. There's. And I'm getting confused. But yeah, okay. Do, no, yes. keep going. I'm following. So she was. She looked pretty depressed, and mm-hmm. I just wanted her to feel better. So I'll be back in Japan next time on July. If you have time, do you want to hang out? Like go out with me kind of stuff? And mm-hmm. she said yes. And, well, f- f- I haven't like really watched those episodes uh, that time. And came back from straight from the airport and went on a dinner and, you know, started talking and stuff. And uh, I was like, oh, this per- person is like really nice and kind. And after uh, a few days or something later, um, she wanted to learn ukulele. So I taught her ukulele Mm -hmm. and I told her that I'm interested in you like for like a third like day. Do you want to like go as a date? But she kind of refused. Um, She told me that she only sees me as a friend. I'm sorry. She said that. And I was like, okay. And at, at that point I wasn't sure so earlier on, we were talking about the nice guy stuff. Mm-hmm. Loved the uh, the video too, nice guy uh, back then. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyways, um, I was, you know, for that time, I was kind of like starting to hate myself for being a nice guy, a n- typical nice guy. Oh, you're so nice. Like, you know, and putting on like, you know, on a friend zone all the time. So I, you know, ended up like talking about this to Avian in Tokyo. But she told me that, you know, like, it's everyone likes your personality. Whoever, like, appreciates your personality really does appreciate. It. And, you know, there's not much people out there. So please don't change. That's what she, uh, she told me. She told me. And I was um, wondering, because I asked her to, you know, go watch the fireworks together. Um, and she says she was interested. So, But she wasn't sure. And well, for me, I wanted to go just to clarify stuff up. Like I was, I really like moved on actually that time. And, you know, as a friend, as a friend, I wanted to go, but, Mm -hmm. um, a day before, you know, the fireworks, um, she called me around like 11 PM or something and she declined it. Like she's, she told me that she can't make it. Um, she doesn't really feel like it feels like it's a date so awkward um so i'm sorry and she hung up so she and, that was and i ended up going there by myself again like three years ago and why did you go why did i go well i, mean, I feel like oh, I, I, mean, wouldn't I, have I, I love fireworks oh okay. <laughs> it was beautiful yeah. it was it was See, huge it was yeah. like it was it was, it was a, in a place called minato mirai it was like the biggest oh, fireworks ever seen. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah. it was so beautiful, and uh, you know, um, 
uh, you know, <laughs> that's train so alone. See, that's why uh, I mean, that's why you're such a, I think, uh, I, I don't want is it Avion? Is that how you say it? Uh, Avian. 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 Yeah. yeah. I, I think she's gave you good advice. Don't change. I think your per- personality is very unique and I think yeah. it's very, it's almost, I, I mean, I don't want to say too nice. Mm-hmm. You are very nice. Um, but I think it's a good thing. And I think she, like she said, just, just hold on to that and wait until that right person comes along. That's going to accept you as that because i don't think you need to be a bad guy the point of nice guys the song wasn't about not being a nice guy <laughs> if you didn't catch that <laughs> really <laughs> no i was wait, nice guys finished last right but in the end you realize oh being a douchebag doesn't always work it just works for certain people oh that's right i gotta rewatch that yeah, um, it's been years since can that you came like out. remake <laughs> like the camel toll video again <laughs> i really want to like remake I like 2020 version the, that one used the instrumental soldier boys <laughs> instrumental oh man you <laughs> yeah i love that note yeah <laughs> i love that yeah we can't do that okay cool well are we at that at that yeah, mark right we're now about at the, we're at that mark all right. all right well thank you again for being here it was thank very you. thanks for having me it's yeah. such an honor it was a personal interest of mine actually we got a lot of a lot of dirt. A lot of stuff that we probably can't see on camera, but we'll mm-hmm. hear more dirt and release it after. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. Uh, um, thank you again. Uh, you could, uh, do you want to plug your handles or anything? Uh, what is it? Like your Twitter, oh, your, your Twitter, Instagram. Instagram. Um, well, Where can they I'm find gonna, you? Oh, EdenKai.com. Okay. EdenKai.com. And I'm also uh, going to start my merch store. It's EdenKai.store. And I'm wearing this one right now. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, that's 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 it. Cool. Awesome. Well, you can um, find us yeah. at Off the Pill on Twitter, at Off the Pill Podcast on Instagram. Uh, with that being said, basically how we end this is we just breathe into the mic. So in three, two, one. Did I miss anything? <laughs>